Here's the steps that I take to tuning a vehicle. The first step is to get all of the um, get all the crossover points set <coughs> so that the speakers are safe. Uh, you know, you can start out with like usually uh, 3,000 hertz or so uh, at the bottom roll off of your tweeters to infinite and then your mids some a good starting points like 100 hertz to 3000 hertz uh, 12 db roll off on both ends of that as well as the tweeter and then your woofer uh, down to however low you want to play it up to 100 hertz with a 12 db roll off so the lines are intersecting at 12 db 12 db per octave on all those positions start out like that um, then I get whatever RT I'm going to use up and uh, and I equalize the sound for each speaker or each channel in the car and if you don't have an RTA if you don't have a, a DSP you may be just doing overall equalizing for the whole car it's not as good, but it's what you got, so it's what you do, right? And uh, if I'm using an RTA, I sit in the driver's seat, or I put the mic in the driver's seat, and then I set off to the side, maybe outside the vehicle, whatever. But I try to get each speaker producing a relatively flat or at least smooth line uh, in the RTA, playing uh, brown noise on the stereo. And once I get the whole, all the speakers individually making a nice smooth-ish uh, EQ at the driver's seat, that's important. You're not, EQ, you're not EQing for what's coming out of the system. You're EQing for what's going into your ears, which is the mic here or the, the device. Uh, you're EQing the vehicle, not the sound coming out of the stereo sound coming out of the stereo can be totally flat, but all the things in the vehicle will color it and change it and make it peaky in valleys. And you're trying to amplify the valleys and reduce the pinks into where they're nice and even at the driver's seat. So once I get that done, then I go in and set time alignment and uh, based on the driver position, if you're gonna do a driver's side tune, uh, I set the time alignment so that it's, uh, you know, bang. If you're doing an all-vehicle tune, then I just time align the subwoofer uh, to the front and let the whole front just just be its normal thing uh, so that the whole front gets the same meh time alignment if you get it. You can also time align to the center, but it ultimately is going to be like that in with um, if you use an, an auto time aligner or an auto tuner you set your mic up between the front seats so that your subwoofer would get involved in that you know. another thing if you got a pretty long vehicle just flip the phase on your subwoofer and you don't really have to worry about time aligning it's probably going to be pretty close so put it 180 degrees out of phase a big station wagon or a tahoe something like that flip it 180 degrees out of phase and that's going to change the time alignment just about right so once you get the time alignment set or wherever you want, uh, then you're pretty much done uh, unless you're going to do a single seat tune, which is what I normally do. If you're doing a single seat tune or a driver's side tune, at this point, this is where things change quite a bit. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to isolate two channels, a uh, left and a right, of two like for me it might be my, my my door mids i left i isolate those turn off the other channels subwoofer tweeters everything just my my low my low mids a single driver on each side or a single uh signal channel on each side and i use a frequency generator starting at 100 hertz and i i, I sit in the seat i listen and I listen to 100 hertz and I slowly bring that frequency generator up 
120, 130, 140. And whenever I hear the sound drift away from this area above my steering wheel, I can see it there. If it starts to drift to the left, then I'll reduce the output. I'll reduce the frequency on the, the left side by a little bit and then raise the frequency on the right side by a little bit, that same frequency. And it'll cause that, that, that sound to drift back over where it's supposed to be. When I get that drifted back into spot, then I get on my frequency generator and I go up a little higher. I come to another one. Say it starts to drift over here to the right. So whatever frequency that is, I go to that channel and I reduce its amplitude a little bit at that frequency and then I increase the left channel and that pulls it back into check again. The sound will move back over in front of me. Uh, once you get done with that, then in the end, whenever I'm doing my sitting and listening test, uh, I'll use a master EQ and tailor the whole system a little bit to get uh, to get the overall sound how I want it, but by doing it this way, you don't you, you get rid of dead spots, and you get a more if you if you start out like I just explained to you, you'll end when you end up EQing with your your master EQ, a little here and there, the overall sound feel will just be amazing. I mean, it'll it'll be perfect, and you won't have anything that your ears go, man, I don't like that. I don't like that that sound I'm here. I don't like that. That's wrong. That stuff all goes away if you follow those steps. <laughs> if you follow those steps, you probably won't need to do any master EQing at the end. But you know, it's the fun. The fun thing about the master EQ is it's a real easy thing to reset back to flat. It's a real easy thing to change. You can just use the different presets in your stereo. You know, the boomy and jazz and whatever. You can flip around with that stuff and then you can always hit, hit, you know, reset back to flat again or custom. It's real easy to mess with that from, you know, listening session to session. So you can change it up, but this doesn't change up the overall fact that everything is in its sweet spot on a flat line. And then you can amplify and, 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 you know, add to and take away temporarily for different environment, different uh, music and different, you know, different moods. Um, so, that's how I tune it. Um, and if you have an RTA, use it. If you don't have an RTA, use an RTA app with a mic on your phone. If you don't have the mic, use an RTA app on your phone. Go here. There's three that are showing up, but that one at the top, this guy, you want that guy. Download that guy. It, it's, it's, not, it's not a thing that's hard to do. If you don't have any of those things, then you have to do a frequency sweep. And listen for the peaks and tune those peaks accordingly to what you're hearing. Uh, and that'll work. And that's how you do it with or without an RTA. Tune it on a budget, baby.